may I start with like my pitch? Yeah, Because I'll forget it if I don't. Go for it. My name is Christopher Glenn. I am the founder and executive director of Bottle Share. That is the craft beverage industry's very first fundraising and fund distribution 501c3 nonprofit organization. So uh, we are at Dry County Brewing Company in Kennesaw. Where's the lens? Right here? Down here. All right. We are at Dry County Brewing Company in Kennesaw, Georgia. Very excited to be here today. It is their four-year anniversary. We're out here spreading awareness and hopefully raising some funds, selling some merch, uh, making some con connections, and building as many relationships as we possibly can so that we can further uh, execute exactly what Bottle Share has attempted to do, and that's take care of it, taking care of as many people as possible in the craft beverage industry. So uh, two and a half years ago, I was the tasting room manager here at Dry County Brewing Company. On my way home from closing up the tasting room, I was struck by a drunk driver. It resulted in permanent neurological damage. And if it wasn't for my friends, my family, and my support team, I'd either be homeless or dead. Those are the only two logical options. Because of the love that I received, my family took me in. They took care of all of my finances. My friends were there for me. The local craft community fundraised for me. Because of all of those things, but let me take it back first. My name's Christopher Glenn, and I was uh, rear-ended by a drunk driver traveling at, a, traveling at approximately 60 miles an hour. And it resulted in uh, atrophy of my, my brain in certain areas, uh, most importantly, speech and memory. I'm on 119 pills per week, and the road to recovery just to this point has been very difficult. Uh, I miss the old me. I miss the old me so so much, and I I feel like that was taken away from me. Um, but I forgive the gentleman that, that did it, and I pray that he never does it again. And the reason that I forgive is because, in my opinion, you can't heal with hate in your heart. I know that I have a long way to go, but like I said, every day is a battle worth fighting. There's a lot more to my story, but unfortunately right now I... I can't really remember it. So after the accident, I spent about the first six to nine months struggling severely. Cognitively, neurologically, emotionally, spiritually, physically, mentally, all of the above were in a lot of pain. And the one thing that I struggled with most at that time was that I wanted to find the old Chris. I loved the old Chris. That guy was the man. Yeah. I would have hung out with him if I wasn't me, right? Um, the fun that I used to have, the excitement that I had in my life and in, in my heart, and the love that I felt. And for the first time I, I, in my life, I did found myself questioning even my own existence. Why even live? I realized that if I had a drink or two, my tremors would go down. I'd be able to speak easier. I could relate to other people. If I didn't have a drink or two, I couldn't be around people. My anxiety was through the roof. I'd crumble in straight panic attacks. And for a while there, I almost started losing my ways. Unfortunately, it took an absolute breakdown, a combination of overconsumption of alcohol to try to hide my pain, and my sister having her severe stroke and I just lost it. Oh 
almost one year exactly later, I end up having four strokes randomly. I was in the hospital. I was not aware of what was going on. I didn't become aware of that until I think over a month later um, that he had started a fundraiser for me. And that's why I wound up moving down to South Georgia with my father. Uh, we've had a really close relationship um, uh, forever. Through the recovery, he just could not um, uh, be on his own at the time. So he, he would stay in with his sister. He stayed with his mom for a while. And um, in, in talking and working with him, we felt it would be best for him to come move in with me for a little while. And so I could help um, everything in his life. It, 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 it was everything from doctor's appointments to remembering uh, to brush your teeth in the morning to uh, just about every, everything you can imagine. It, it, uh, we had to start from base zero to work our way back to where we are today. It was the greatest decision I ever made. I got away from everything. I was able to focus on my healing. I was out in nature all the time. And I really got to focus on bottle share and what I wanted it to be. When I engulfed myself in to building bottle share, I was able to take all of the negative things that constantly bombarded my mind and put them in the back and focus on something that's positive. And I wound up finding the truest form of healing in helping other people. Well, it has, has uh, through a dad's perspective, it has done nothing but warm my heart to see my son dedicate, to see how um, physically, emotionally, mentally, um, um, psychologically, uh, at what level he was and, and what he had to go through to get back to where even to the stages he is today. And uh, to see him come this far and to make a de dedication to care about others and want to give back, he has just poured his heart and soul into this. And you delving completely into into this, the whole bottle share initiative and, and really putting your whole life into this is impacting so many other people <laughs> that I don't think they, you would have never impacted. Like. What it really comes down to is the day that Trey Sinclair sat down with me and said, hey, we have this really unique opportunity here. I don't want to, I don't want too much of the credit because Chris has made bottle share what it is uh, today and what I could have never made it. But uh, the, the term bottle share, the name bottle share, um, a concept of a nonprofit in this industry is, is something I'd been thinking on since even prior to Dry County starting and definitely since Dry County had started. Uh, you know, there's a, this industry is awesome for a lot of reasons, but one of them is that sense of community and the sense of give back that there is. Pretty much every brewery in this, in this community does nonprofit and give back and community work in one way or another. With Chris's, uh, you know, unfortunate accident and kind of the, again, seeing him share that story with the passion that he did, uh, it, kind of just clicked for me that he was the perfect person to take that idea and run with it. Bottle Share has grown exponentially. It's been amazing. The community has really taken to this movement and what we're trying to do. And that has revolutionized the way that we care for one another in the craft beverage industry. It's tough. A lot of these guys don't do it to make millions. They do it because they love it. It's a passion project and therefore not necessarily because of that, but there's a lack of care. There's a lack of, of resources available for people that suffer extreme hardships outside of the workplace that prevent them from working and making an income to provide for themselves and their families. As we've continued to grow out of our hyper-localized area, which is here in Atlanta, Georgia, we first branched off into New Orleans, Louisiana, with Urban South. We then branched off to Mobcraft Beer up in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, which was our very first nationally distributed beer, Believe in Beer, which started off as a collaboration with Brewers Association, which is the echelon of the industry. Um, and that was extremely humbling, very exciting for us to be able to do. Uh, and now we're out in Colorado, and I just got back from two individual week-long trips where we were able to talk to and work with a variety of 
incredible breweries out in Colorado. What we're doing is bringing community together, bringing them closer together, helping one another out, especially in our times of need. And I think that's just an absolutely beautiful thing. Bottle share means hope, really. It means hope for, not just for our industry, since obviously it, it's, it's helping members of our industry. Uh, for me, it means so much more than that. It was hope for my brother, because after his accident, it really gave him a new purpose in life and something to really focus on and to fight for. Yes, I think the, the relationship between Dry County and Bottle Share is a pretty unique one and, and pretty cool one. Um, you know, again, being kind of the, the initial home of, of Chris and of Bottle Share. You know, he was behind the bar as a bartender here before, uh, before Bottle Share was ever a thing. Uh, and then we were lucky enough to kind of take an idea that we had and, and you know, give it to him, see him run with it, um, do brews like this with him. Um, and, and be a part of it. I think it's uh, the relationship now is, is one that it's awesome to just see what he's doing out there and the things he's doing out there and that Bottle Share is doing out there. Um, and know we play a little, a little piece of that, a little role in it. And then for me as well, being part of it and in the midst of it and then being a recipient of it. Um, yeah, I think if I, had to, if I had to sum it up, I would say it means hope. <laughs> My name is Elena. I work at Second Self Brewery, and I got involved with Bottle Share after my husband passed away. So for me, the We Brew Hope is, you know, we, we see somebody in what could be one of the worst situations of their life. Um, as I, I think Bottle Share comes in kind of as um, like a positive light and like, hey, we're gonna help you through this. Um, and as somebody who didn't have that positive light, it, it really inspired me and showed me that there is a future and that there is hope that things will get better. And I'm really lucky in the fact that they did. Uh, you know, if I look back a year from now, um, I really didn't have much hope. <laughs> it, I, it seemed like it wasn't possible. And a huge part of why it is, is because of what Bottle Share has done to help me. In 2021, we will enter the wine market. We will collaborate on a wine. And then the sales and the proceeds of that wine will go back to Bottle Share to then start helping the wine industry. The folks that make the wine that people love to drink every single day, right? The following year, we're going to go into the distillery industry, that community and we want to start helping them as well. And eventually I want Bottle Share to be a protective umbrella that covers all three major branches of the alcohol industry and the workers and the families that create the beverages that we all love. <laughs>